Fukushima was a decade ago, but that's not even close to the half-life of the radioactive isotopes in the fish you are eating. Dr. Ken Bissler explains. Check it out, leave your comments, ding the bell, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our channel. Ken Bissler is on the line with us. He's a senior scientist in marine chemistry and geochemistry at the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute, which uh, their website is whoi.edu, and uh, his Twitter handle is cafe underscore thorium. Uh, Dr. Bissler, welcome to the program. Thank you for joining us. Uh, it's my pleasure to be here, Tom. So uh, b before we get into exactly what's going on with fish and the oceans and things like that, I, I just wanted to do a reality check. Back in the 1970s, um, I, I engaged in a fairly lengthy correspondence with a guy by the name of Dr. John Goffman. He had just started a group called the Union of Concerned Scientists, and I was one of their early uh, donors and participants. And, and he made the point in, in uh, uh, one of his pieces and, and, and amplified it in a personal note to me that uh, in his opinion, there, there was no, quote, safe, end quote, level of radiation because the way that cancer is produced in an individual, uh, in, a, in a human body, is it always starts with one cell, one particle or beam, depending on the type of radiation, um, strikes the, the nucleus of that cell and knocks out, a, 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 you know, a, a, some, somehow damages the DNA. And on a rare occasion, that damage causes the cell to stop, to lose its ability to, to, to die. Basically, it just keeps reproducing on and on and on and on and on, faster and faster. And that cell becomes 10 cells, becomes a million cells, becomes a cancerous mass and, and kills us. And that that's the process. And so all it takes is one cell and one, one particle or beam. And thus, we should be concerned about any exposure to radiation, although there are dose-dependent and, and population-dependent numbers that you can apply to these things. Um, is that still the, the way that science looks at this, or at least many scientists look at this? Yeah, there's certainly uh, no threshold that's been established below which there is no effect of radiation, say, on human health. But, you know, we also have to realize there's already radiation around us on our planet in our oceans you know man-made ever since we started testing nuclear weapons in the 40s sure. which peaked in the 60s so we live in this background and it's a good question how much more did japan add to that background sure okay so let's get into that what what did japan add to the uh, to the radiation load of the of the world and specifically the united states yeah, so I think, though, it's, it's worth studying 2011 off Japan when the accident happened, the reactor right in the ocean. And we saw levels, I'll talk mostly about cesium, radioactive forms of cesium, that were about 10 million times higher than were there before. So in the couple of weeks, maybe two months after, as they were trying to heroically cool that down so it wouldn't get worse, a lot of discharge went in the ocean, fallout from the atmosphere, that increased the ocean levels quite dramatically to the point where you could have effects directly on marine life, death, reproductive effects. That's, that's where you don't want to be. Now, now, what happens, you know, is this quickly is reduced for the next four years. We couldn't eat the fish off of Japan. And now, for say, the last four or five years, uh, we're less concerned about that original source and maybe what might happen there if new things uh, were released, new radioactivity. Now, my understanding is that um, bodies, um, animal bodies, if, whether it be fish or whether it be you and me, our bodies believe that cesium is actually potassium. And so we absorb that and put it into our muscle tissue. And that's why high levels of cesium, for example, cause uh, cesium heart, where it, it just burns away the muscle tissue in the heart. And eventually, you know, the heart ends up with holes in it and things like this. This was a big problem around the Chernobyl area. Uh, back in the day, that uh, that radioactive strontium the body thinks is calcium, uh, iodine of course the body thinks is iodine, but it's radioactive, and so it whacks the thyroid. The strontium uh, causes bone cancers. Am I right on, in 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 those things? And 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 to what extent is that amplified the the uh, the pickup of these kinds of of radioactive isotopes from Fukushima into the fish that might be in the Pacific Ocean? Right. You're, you're absolutely correct in the way they behave like other chemicals, so the body doesn't distinguish between the, the potassium or the cesium. 
what that means, say, when it gets into a fish or an eye system, is it kind of gets taken up and we release kind of at those same rates, a couple of months to lose half of the radioactive form of seeds that you take up. If you move away from the source, humans or fish, you start releasing that. Strontium-90 being like calcium ends up in the bones, not for a couple of months, but say a couple of years. So it sticks around a lot longer. And at the lower end, you have things like tritium that behave like the hydrogen atom, radioactive form of hydrogen, behaves like water, that most of that trajectory goes in and out in days or a couple of weeks. So absolutely, the isotope matters in terms of its behavior and time in a fish or our systems. So there are some fish that, that migrate literally from the east to the west side of the Pacific, and I believe tuna are in that category. Um, I, d have we ever on the west coast of the United States seen uh, radioactive cesium or strontium or any of these other, uh, strontium being one of the more longer lived uh, radioisotopes, have we seen that showing up in fish on the west coast of the United States? And, and, and I also understand that there was, you know, shortly after the Fukushima disaster, that the U.S. government radically cut back on its testing looking for these things. Do I have that right? Well, the testing programs varied. Usually they were increased. Japan actually, you know, leads the path in having tested, say, 130,000 fish since 2011. But let's get back to your mm -hmm. tuna story. It's absolutely correct that some, uh, particularly the Pacific bluefin tuna, can feed in the western part of the Pacific, travel. It's an amazing journey, two to four months, all the way across 5,000 miles to our coastline. So in 2011, uh, a couple of scientists, Dan Madigan, Nick Fisher, and Sydney Stonybrook, detected low levels, but uniquely from Japan, of radioactive forms of cesium in their muscle tissue. Now, remember what I said, too, about they lose cesium as, you know, time scales of one or two months. So as they swam along, they actually got lower and lower in the levels of radioactivity in those fish to the mm. point when, when they arrived on our shore, you know, that level was about 200 times lower in the flesh of those fish and the steak you might buy than our standard that's allowed, say, by law, if you consumed every day and were concerned about health effects. So it right. was detected, and uh, but in the bluefin tuna that make this fantastic journey in two to four months. Is there is there then, I guess the bottom line question, we have 45 seconds before we hit a hard break here, um, is there reason to be concerned about eating fish out of the Pacific Ocean in, in, the, in the context of Fukushima radiation here in America? Uh, not at this point, no. Uh, both near Japan, the levels are below a much stricter threshold than we have mm -hmm. certainly in this country. And uh, certainly on the West Coast, there's also been testing of salmon, uh, whales, other fish by Canadians, and they tend to be well below these thresholds. Not zero, so the point of increased risk can be there, but certainly well below where governments set a threshold for daily consumption, annual consumption, and seafood and things like that.